I did a video recently about the sports I felt should be added to the Olympics. You know, stuff like squash or mixed martial arts, those sorts of things. Well, today I want to do a little tweak to that and do a list of events that I'd like to see added. To be clear, these are events where the sport is already in the Olympics, but this particular version of that sport isn't. You'll see what I mean. Let's get into it. Number 10, Ultra Marathon. We all know and love the marathon. It's one of the timeless parts of the Summer Olympics. And in fact, it's traditionally the final event of the track and field calendar and usually comes on the last day of the games. It's loaded with tradition and intrigue. It's awesome. But in recent years, ultra marathons have become more and more popular among the general public. And to me, they deserve to be a part of the Olympic calendar. While the traditional marathon is 42.195 kilometers or 26.2 miles long, Ultra marathons are typically much, much longer. I wouldn't suggest a 50 kilometer ultra marathon. It's too close in length to the regular marathon, but I could definitely get behind a 100 kilometer or even a 100 mile event. The latter might be a bit too extreme to start and the Olympics have proven they prefer the metric system anyway. So my vote would go to the 100 kilometer race. How interesting would that be? And while we're on the topic of marathon variations, number nine, half marathon. Seriously, how is this not already an Olympic event? It's not like track and field doesn't already have a ton of event variations for running. It has always struck me as odd that after the 10,000 meter event, there is a massive jump all the way up to the marathon, which is more than four times the length of the 10,000 meter. A half marathon is not only logical in that respect, but it's also a much more familiar distance for a lot of amateurs and amateur runners especially, as more and more people are completing half marathons recreationally these days. And I think having this as an Olympic event would only increase the popularity of distance running. Also from a spectator perspective, it's a shorter event than the marathon at least, with the Olympic winner likely being somewhere around the one hour mark, meaning that it would still easily fit into a TV schedule. Seriously, let's get this in the games ASAP. Number eight, standing long jump. Also known as the standing broad jump, this one actually used to be in the Olympics, though it was last included in the Olympic program in 1912. It's always confused me as to why this isn't an event. Given the relative excitement and popularity of the closely related jumping events like the high jump, the long jump, and the triple jump, I've never heard a decent explanation as to why the standing long jump is a no-go other than perhaps it's too similar, but by that logic a lot of Olympic events would get called into question. This will show a slightly North American bias, but the standing long jump has been a part of the NFL combine for American football for ages, and it's well established as a test in military and police forces around the world. So it's not like this isn't already an athletic event in many places. Let's close this with a fun fact. Norway is the only country in the world that still holds a national championship for standing long jump. Way to go, Norway. Hey folks, I'm just going to take a quick break here to say if you're digging the video, I would love it if you consider subscribing to the channel. I know a lot of you viewers aren't subscribed, so it would be awesome if you join the journey with me. Thanks in advance. All right, back to the video. Number seven, cross country running. My apologies to hit you with a third running variation here, but again, we have another glaring gap in the Olympic athletics calendar. This event actually used to be in the Olympics, and rightfully so. It was in the program in 1912, 1920, and 1924, but then it was discontinued thereafter, never to return. I gotta say, this one makes so little sense to me for exclusion as a running event. Not only does it already have a previous Olympic tradition, it's competitive at the high school and college level around the world. It's also closely related to trail running, which in recent years has become one of the more popular and fastest growing segments of running for amateurs. And for what it's worth, many successful and prominent distance runners have actually pitched the International Olympic Committee to reinstate cross-country running, and there's also support for that from the International Association of Athletics Federations. So maybe this one will actually get into the games in the future. My fingers are crossed. Number six, underwater swimming. This one might seem a little odd, a little out of left field, but hear me out, okay? First of all, this actually was included at the 1900 Olympic Games in Paris, where athletes actually swam in the Seine, right in the middle of Paris. Not sure how clean or sanitary that was, but whatever. Regardless, it has made it to the Olympics before, and that was because it made sense. 
But second, the reason it was removed after 1900 was primarily because it was seen as boring for spectators. And yeah, no kidding, if they are swimming underwater, especially in a murky and polluted river in the middle of Paris in 1900, there's not much to see. But technology has changed to the point where underwater cameras and such items like that would eliminate that issue. Also, we probably would have some cleaner water for folks nowadays, and it could even be done indoors so spectators could see more anyways. Obviously, swimming is a cornerstone of the Olympics, so the general interest is there. I think this one could be a winner. I really do. Number five, mountaineering slash ice climbing. So a semi-similar version of this was actually at one point included in the Olympics. It was called alpinism, and it was on the program in 1924, 1932, and 1936. However, that was actually quite different because it wasn't an actual event at the games, but rather it was a medal award for the greatest achievements in mountaineering over the previous four years. And that's not what I'm getting at here. I'm saying there should be an actual competition for getting up a mountain or an ice face as fast as possible. Maybe it could be a race up a mountain where folks go at the same time, Maybe it's a staggered start. Maybe it's individually one at the time. I don't know. I'm open to ideas, but I refuse to believe this isn't a variant that can make sense. And I say variant because sport climbing finally made it into the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo. So this feels like a natural next step, especially as sport climbing is a summer Olympic event. So mountaineering and or ice climbing in the games would give the Winter Olympics something very similar. Come on, this one has got to happen. Number four vertical high jump. So there used to be an Olympic event called the standing high jump, which was like the usual high jump we all know and love, but with the tweak that there's no running head start. You just stand there and have to jump over a bar. And while I actually think that's kind of a cool variation, I'm thinking of something else here. This would be a true vertical jump. Instead of jumping over a bar, it's about reaching up and touching as high a point as possible. The person who touches the highest point wins. Pretty straightforward. Many, many sports around the world already greatly value, emphasize, and train for the vertical high jump. Sports like basketball, volleyball, American football, they all come to mind immediately. And this fits into athletics nicely, right alongside other stuff like the high jump and the long jump. So let's give some thought to including this one. And while we're there, remember that standing long jump? Let's do that one too. Number three, snow volleyball. You have probably not heard of this, or maybe you have, but you haven't given it much thought. But before you say I'm crazy, I'm here to tell you that this should be in the Winter Olympics, full stop. Quite obviously, this builds on the base of success and interest that has already been laid by indoor volleyball and even more closely beach volleyball. This would just be the winter equivalent where players play on compacted snow rather than sand. And before you think I'm a lunatic, you should know that the International Volleyball Federation has been developing and promoting this variant for some time now as they try to grow the game. And there's actually a professional snow volleyball tour that started in Austria in 2009. As weird as it sounds initially, once you give it some thought, it actually makes a ton of sense. And frankly, I think it'd be super fun to watch. I mean, if you dig beach volleyball, wouldn't you also be into snow volleyball? Number two, the mile. Did you notice that I titled this one The Mile and didn't say anything about the actual sport I was talking about, and yet you already knew what I was getting at? That is one of the big reasons I know this should be in the Olympics. The reason that this isn't in the Olympics is because the 1500 meter event is already there and the world loves the metric system and rightfully so, the metric system's awesome. Since the mile is just a touch longer at 1609.344 meters, I get it, they are super similar to each other. But this is still the only running event of an imperial distance that survived the move into metric distances and it survived for a reason. No one cares that Roger Bannister broke the 3 minute and 48 second 1500 meter barrier or whatever it was. They care that he broke the 4 minute mile barrier. There's so much history associated with this distance and given how much history and tradition oozes out of the pores of the Olympics, this one deserves to be brought back. I can guarantee it would instantly become a marquee event of the games. Number 1. Mixed and Relay Events this is a bit of a catch-all category, but it has always boggled my mind that there aren't more mixed events featuring both men and women at the Olympics. Fortunately, the tide is turning on this one as many more mixed and relay events are being introduced. For example, in Paris in 2024, the Marathon Race Walk Mixed Relay comes to the Olympics and it replaces the men's 50km race walk. But for real, I see no reason why they need to stop this anytime soon. 
Mixing men and women in events is an easy move and it introduces a ton of new and interesting results and strategies in many of the sports and events. And relays have, at least theoretically, infinite possibilities as you can mix and match genders, distances, and disciplines to your heart's content if you so wish. To my viewers out there, I'd love for you to drop your thoughts into the comments below on the mixed and relay events that you'd like to see at the Olympics. Let's get creative because you can do whatever you want. Well, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the events that absolutely need to get into the Olympics ASAP. What do you think? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Let's talk about it more in the comments and keep the fun going.